Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the West Bridge Water Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is December 19th, 2017. If you would please silent uh, your cell phones. We'd also remind you that uh, any and all portions of this meeting may be uh, recorded and televised on local access. Uh, we ask you to please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. My favorite. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is Annie here? Yes. Okay, first item on the agenda is the swearing in of our new police, uh, new fire chief. Uh, it's, a great, it's a great pleasure to welcome Kenny May and his family here for the swearing in. Kenny, do you have anyone you'd like to introduce? My mother, of course. Oh, welcome. my God, don't say that. I'm going to cry my eyes out anyway. So. Uh, my wife, daughter, and my big son back there. Hey. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. And I believe a few members of the fire department are here tonight. Yes, a few. All right, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, is our town clerk here? Yeah. Annie, you want to come up? Sure. Are we ready? We are ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I Kenneth May. Having been appointed fire chief. Have been appointed fire chief. For the town of West Bridgewater. For the town of West Bridgewater. Do solemnly swear and affirm. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will faithfully and impartially. I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform all the duties. Discharge and perform all the duties incumbent on me. Incumbent on me according to the best of my abilities. According to the best of my ability and understanding. And understanding agreeable to the Constitution of the United States of America. Agreeable, agreeable to the Constitution of the United States of America. The laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. In the town of West Bridgewater. In the town of West Bridgewater. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Also, just want to take a moment and recognize our retiring police uh, fire chief, Fire Hunt, Fire Chief Hunt. Hey. It's a great pleasure to have you today. <laughs> chief, it's been a great, great pleasure working with you for uh, many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, in my official capacity here as a selectman, as a father of a son that loves visiting your department, uh, but as a resident, uh, you've served the town very, very well for many, many years. And uh, hats off to you, and we wish you a great time in your retirement, and happy ghost hunting. <laughs> If I could, I'd like to ask for a two-minute recess so we can get some photos with the new and uh, retiring chief and uh, let anyone disbark that wishes not to stay here for our meeting. So moved. <laughs> I have a motion. I have a second. Second. Right. Thank you. Right. We're in recess. <laughs> Okay, we are back in session. Uh, next on the agenda is the medical marijuana host agreement. David? Yes. Um. So, Mr. Chairman, I will just ask the attorney for that represents MD Holistics is attorney Pellegrini. He is supposed to be here. He's not here yet. So if you don't mind, he, is, he should be here any minute. Absolutely. We can hold off. All right, we'll come back. On the Warrant Board of Selectmen Business, a uh, discussion on Milwaukee's. Tracy, what do you have for us? Sure. So, um, as you know, during your last meeting on December 6th, the board approved the annual liquor license renewals. At that point, we had not received <coughs> Malarkey's application for renewal. Subsequently, um, he indicated he wished to renew on December 8th. Um, he was notified by letter um, December 13th, which is in the meeting packet that um, he would need to apply as new um, because he didn't fulfill the requirement of applying by in, during November as required. 
Okay. So that's where we are right now. And we had tried communication numerous times from the office prior to this also, right, due to non-opening? Correct. So there, um, my understanding is that the Board of Health and the building inspector, as well as our office, had reached out regarding annual inspections and renewal, um, and, and no one was able to successfully contact him until after the um, period for renewals had gone by. And those dates are set by the ABCC? It, and by statute. So, okay, thank you. So, so, so now uh, uh, he has applied for another license. Uh, is that is that correct? So he would be. So the license would be available as of January first. Um, he uh, he could apply as a new applicant as anyone can. Um, just for the board's awareness, we do have someone interested in the license, um, and they're scheduled for a public hearing on January tenth, as well. As of right now, the license is considered active. It's considered so. Um, it's with Mr. Buckley through the end of the year, at which time it will expire and become available on January 1st. Okay. All right. David, do you have anything? Not at this point. Right. Mr. Buckley, welcome. Hi. Do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, yeah. I, I, was, I got sick for a while there, and that's why we were closed. Um, I, didn't, I didn't realize that, that if you closed three days, that we had to notify you. That, that was, that's on me. But it was a couple of weeks. Um, I know. I was yeah. I was in the hospital. I, I ended up with a lung infection that I have asthma anyway, and so like I always get more sick than most people, but I didn't think anything of it. And finally, I went to the hospital, and they told me if I, I had this weak infection, if I hadn't gone when I did, I may not. You know, it was bad. So I was in the hospital for a while. Um, so that's why we, we were in, you know. So I was the only one that to open the place up every day. So that was. You know why we're in the bit now. I'm, I'm back and I'm ready to reopen and try to get this, you know, back up and going the way we had it. And the uh, the earliest we could even have a hearing if uh, the applications um, in place and ready to be voted on would be when. Um, if a full application, a full new, I'd say new, not a renewal application, was submitted to the office tomorrow by noon, it would literally have to be tomorrow by noon in order to make um, a public hearing date of January 10th. If not, um, the other application would be on for January 10th, um, and depending on how the board um, decided on that, there, there wouldn't be another um, public hearing available until the end of January. Okay, but when we receive it, because it's already a license holder, um, would that be faster because the ABCC doesn't turn them around overnight? Um, so in terms of how, whether it would be quicker because he was a license holder, no, because it's not a renewal. It would be treated as a new application and it would follow all of the timelines that any new applicant would follow. So January 10th would not be an opening day. That would be a hearing day. Correct. And then it would be the, that would start the clock. Exactly. For ABCC. Correct. So, um, so if you were to apply as new, um, you would have to cease operations December 31st until the license was acted on. Okay. Is that going to be a problem? You'll get that license in only? Right tomorrow? Yeah. Hold up. Right. In all components, it would have to be complete because um, it, it triggers a set of timelines in order to make the January 10th hearing happen. Um, it would have to be com absolutely complete. Everything would need to be in. So just so you understand the... Most, I assume, most of what was with his past application would be valid still. It's only been, what, six months? Um, so there's additional steps that would need to be taken. Um, he could probably pull a lot of the information <coughs> from it. Right. Um, but it would have to be completed as... Okay. But well, most of the information is there. Just had to be rewritten. That Be rewritten. Um, the forms <coughs> would need to be... I'd like the copies of the old one. You'd have to re, you'd have to resubmit them. You'd have to have you know resign everything yeah. and redate it. Right, right. Yeah, you can come to the office and get them, but this needs to. I mean, it's very time sensitive. Sensitive. It needs to be done tomorrow, right? It has to be in by tomorrow so that I can request the you have, notification. Do you have like in your office now? Um, I I could look online. Well, actually, a large chunk of the application you're going to have to fill out is through the ABCC website. It's really, we don't do any of it. I mean, it's just processed through us. We don't handle the the license. Actually, we just process it and send it on. So there's no way to. Just do this as a renewal. It's it's statutory. It's kind of out of the hands of the board at this point. Are you have you reopened? No, I was doing the first of the year. Uh, 
at the holidays. Um, no, I mean, I, I put everything, my whole life savings into that place. We understand. I mean, you know, you know I'm, we're going to do whatever we can do to, to make it happen. Um, well, if you can come in the office tomorrow, meet with Tracy, go over whatever has to be filled out tomorrow, and um, it still requires two weeks posting, right? Um, between the time that we get the application and the hearing, yes. Between posting it with the okay, newspaper so we, and... What's the earliest? The, oh, it's two weeks uh, for advertising or... Two weeks to get the advertisement to the paper and then have it um, posted with enough lead time before the for the meeting. Okay. Board have anything? No, I know. Like he said, he's put his life savings and everything else. I, you know, I, I just hope that I know this office and I'll trace you. You do all you can and you come in and, and see what we can do for you. And um, into that end, so a lot of people were trying to reach out to you unsuccessfully so I just want to make sure we have all of your up-to-date contact information so moving forward um, we weren't having success in a variety of different ways so if I can get your updated email phone and address so that we know that we've got the right stuff going to you I think it would be wise do you know what time you'd be able to come in tomorrow First thing tomorrow, whatever. so I'm just saying if we schedule the time now I mean we we looked at this issue pretty closely because we wanted to try to do what we could on your behalf, but the statute and the regulation from ABCC is pretty clear, and if you were to violate that, you wouldn't, you wouldn't survive any challenge. So, I mean, we have to follow the law. Come in first thing tomorrow morning, see Tracy. I do believe it's going to require notification to abutters again. It will require so, notification to abutters. Um, but, you know, we can get you at our first next meeting, which is January 10th. If, there's a t if the timeline allows, I don't think the board would be objective to having a special meeting uh, just to address that if we had to. Uh, but I know we, you know, by law we have to go by a timeline that's set out uh, by the advertising requirements, the si signature requirements and all that. But if there's anything we can do, uh, let us know. Yeah. You know, Even if we just have to pop in for a 15-minute meeting, we'll try to do that for you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, so I'll see you in the morning. Sure. And do you want to just leave me your phone number? Um, because if I can, if there's things that you need to bring with you, I can let you know ahead of time. <coughs> How are you doing? Doing pretty good. It's warming up again. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's only temporary. I know it's only temporary. Uh, yeah. Temporary. Is oh, good though, right? <laughs> it's good. Temporary is um, good. It feels good. Well, that taken care of that, we'll move down on the agenda. Act on Marion Leonard's re uh, resignation from the Housing Authority. Yep, so uh, Ms. Leonard sent a letter over just stating that for personal reasons, she was unable to um, be on the board anymore. And as a result, she's resigning. She will be resigning effective in April. And so it is a notification to the board. Uh, a motion to accept her resignation and send a letter of thanks. Second. Alderman Anthony, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, we'll skip down one more. Uh, accept minutes, uh, accept the November 1st, 2007 minute meetings. So meeting moved. minutes. Anthony? Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approve the minutes of November 15th. Move. <laughs> Second. Alvin and Anthony, all those in favor? Again, Aye. Aye. Discuss the truck exclusion for a portion of Depot Street in the town of Easton. Uh, they petitioned to get our support. Uh, David? Yep. So let me call the map up because I think the map is important. <coughs> there it is. So the map is on page. There we are. So the town of Easton <coughs> is experiencing issues where if you look at the map, you'll see the red line represents Depot Street in Easton. And so vehicles or high commercial, high, uh, commercial vehicles are traveling from Depot Street eastbound, traveling across Depot Street, taking a left under Turnpike, which comes into West Bridgewater, in order to be able to access the Route 123 interchange on Route 24. You'll see this next map, the reason that's an issue is because this next map indicates again where the red line is 
is that that crosses through a highly residential area in Easton, and then when it turns into West Bridgewater, it's really not an issue for us because it's going through an industrial area. So what the town of Easton has done is they have petitioned Mass DOT to have an exclusion on Depot Street for large commercial trucks. And Mass DOT has said that in order for them to have an exclusion, that they have to be able to get a letter of support from any other communities that it could potentially impact, which would be the city of Brockton and the town of West Bridgewater. The city of Brockton has already approved the plan, and I'm asking the Board of Selectmen to endorse the plan as well. So when I studied this, the more I studied it, the more I realized that this is actually a benefit to the town of West Bridgewater, and here's why. Currently, large commercial trucks that are going across Depot Street and taking a left on the turnpike are already crossing West Bridgewater. So 100% of those vehicles are already traveling through the town of West Bridgewater. If there is an exclusion at Depot Street, it would seem obvious that somebody would take a left to go up through Brockton um, and travel at that point um, through Belmont Street to 123. So that means that 100% of the vehicles that were traveling through West Bridgewater would no longer travel through West Bridgewater. If, however, instead of taking a left, they were to take a right, even if it's 50%, it saves 50% of the travel through our town. So I think it's a huge benefit to the town of West Bridgewater, and as a result, I'm asking the board for, for its support. David, I know in the past we've been unsuccessful uh, because of abutting uh, communities not supporting us. Um, so I think uh, this is a good thing we can do for our neighbors in Easton. Again, it has uh, little to no effect on the town of West Bridgewater. Um, familiar with the, with the road, it is a highly residential area, and um, I support us uh, going forward with uh, a letter of support. I agree. It doesn't seem like it will have any negative impact on us. Uh, thank you, Dave, for studying into it, too. And uh, it, it, it sounds like a, a thing to do. Yeah, is this a, uh, a major process, uh, not to sidetrack, but uh, is this a major process to go through for a community to get the um, um, commercial vehicles excluded from certain roads? Yeah, so what it appears is following the template that Easton used, they did hire an engineering firm. They used OCPC for some of it. Yep. They hired a private engineering firm to be able to determine some of the information, provide that information to Mass DOT. And then we just you would just have to get support from surrounding towns. Only if there was an effect on that <clears> town. And the reason I'm bringing it up and, um, is uh, Grant Street, uh, for some reason, has become a big cut through for a lot of heavy commercial vehicles. And this is a very small road uh, with, a, with a very small bridge uh, that was never really designed to hold that type of traffic. And it seems to be more and more commercial traffic cutting through there. Um, I've had four uh, residents on the street, uh, Eldon not being one of them. Uh, though I'm sure he experiences the issues there with a lot of commercial vehicles. Um, so I'd like to go forward and see if there's something we can do there, if at the very least uh, notify the uh, police department of, of a problem with heavy trucks doing uh, high speed on a very small residential street. So I think to follow that process, the right thing to do is I will place this issue on the next agenda. Okay. Uh, at that time, um, if the board is so inclined, you would take a vote to exclude large commercial vehicles on that vehicle on that road i would ask ocpc to do a formal traffic count so we will have a percentage of large axle or multiple axle trucks that go across the road armed with that information we would then contact mass dot as long as they gave us authorization to move forward which because it doesn't impact any other municipality i assume would be forthcoming from them and then we would just take that final vote and um and post accordingly great thank you very much All right. um, Anything further on that? All right. Uh, let's go back to the other, take a vote on that depot. Sorry, I'll yes. make a motion that, that we uh, grant this. I have a motion. Second. A motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Ian, just so you're aware, I just received notification that Attorney Pellegrini it will not be here this evening. I'm ready to speak to it whenever the board is so inclined. Okay. Why don't we back up to that then, David? Sure. Um, so let's go to... So on page three on your packet, 
you will see that there is a ag proposed agreement here between MDH Holistics, who is looking to operate a medical marijuana facility uh, in the Plassey Masonry Building up on Maple Street. The Board of Selectmen in, I believe it was September, has already offered a non-opposition letter, and therefore they are applying through the state and following their applicable process. In the meantime, the legislation allows for the town to be able to negotiate what we refer to as a host community agreement uh, to mitigate any negative impact or potential perceived impacts for <coughs> the town. So I've been engaged in that process with Attorney Pellegrini for the last handful of months. So I'll just bullet point a few of the highlights. One is this will be a medical marijuana facility. It will not be a recreational mar marijuana facility. It cannot be converted to a recreational marijuana facility unless we change this agreement. State law allows medical marijuana facilities to be able to convert at a later date if the local municipality allows it. And this agreement right now forbids them to be able to convert. Number two is that they will pay us $5,000 up front within uh, X amount of days of them receiving their license through the state to reimburse us for any legal fees. Two, because they're a nonprofit facility, they are not subject to taxation. However, because they are renting or leasing, the landlord will still be paying property tax. And I did not want to see the town lose out on any potential personal property tax. So they will pay us $3,000 per year in lieu of personal property tax with an escalation clause after three years at 2.5% per year. In addition to that, they will pay us $30,000 at a minimum the first three years and $60,000 at a minimum for every year thereafter those three years as a mitigation agreement, as part of the mitigation funds. <coughs> While we were negotiating this, the state of Massachusetts actually changed its legislation that required these agreements to be no longer for, for five years. And after the initial five years, the town was going to have to be able to prove whatever financial negative <laughs> impact it had. So therefore, the municipality couldn't hold somebody ransom. Because that was not the spirit of this agreement, I asked Attorney Pellegrini. He agreed, and his client agreed, that we wrote the agreement that says that this contract will survive that statute, and if for whatever reason that did not withstand some type of a legal challenge in the future, that this contract would automatically renew under the same terms and conditions, and that they would never require or compel the town to be able to document its costs. So I think that this is a really good deal for the town. It's a business that's allowed, uh, and we're making the most of the opportunity. I think it, it ought to sit there against something like this, but as I say, the voters voted for it. It's in an area that, uh, what street is it going to be on there? To, uh, it will be on Maple Street. Maple Street, over, over in the thing there, and uh, I, I'm inclined to vote for it. Uh, and uh, eventually, uh, you know, we'll... We're going to probably have other applications, but right now uh, I think this is <coughs> maybe we should go by. And I'm sorry I, I missed one other item of note that the board should know, is that where this is being proposed, uh, it is allowed as a use. However, it is within 500 feet of a residential area, so it has to go before the ZBA for a variance. Okay. Now, the residential area happens to be on the other side of Route 24. <laughs> so... Although the ZBA will have final say on this, the re reality is, is that the ZBA is going to have to be able to prove that that 500-foot area is not infringed upon, which where you have a freeway, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be pretty hard for them to be able to prove that. So most likely the ZBA, I mean, in my opinion, will end up approving this because the highway does a better job than just 500 linear feet to a traditional residential area. Anthony, you have anything? No, I completely agree with what Alden said. Job well done. I know you worked on this with the town council and everything's in order, so I will entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, annual license renewal. Tracy, how's your first uh, year of licenses uh, solo? It went well. Good. It went well. Um, so basically, the licenses before you are all of the garage repair, common fix. Class one, two, and three, um, as well as two kind of miscellaneous pump and jump and transfer station. So, if 
overall, my recommendation is that the board renew all of these licenses subject to just some um, close out of some items that are in process prior to December 28th. So assuming we get everything, I would recommend approving them all. All right. I'll make a motion to approve them as stated by Tracy. Second. Any further questions? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And let's see, site plan review, 728 North Main Street. So, so 728 North Main Street is an existing building. It is actually located as you drove from here um, on the left-hand side right before Harding's Restaurant. Uh, one side of it has been vacant for some time, and they are proposing to place a fitness center in it. Uh, it is going to require a little bit of additional parking and a little bit of configuration or reconfiguration on the inside of the building and therefore it is triggering site plan review uh, before the planning board. Um, so it's before you for any of your comments. Uh, David, I'm obviously familiar with the, with the building you're talking about and I was excited. I believe a uh, car parts um, uh, building occupies half of that building. That is correct. And uh, I was kind of excited when they went in there because I was looking forward to the exterior of the building being cleaned up, the parking lot being cleaned up, and it seems to be just the opposite. Um, it's a little bit of a mess there. The parking lot's uh, kind of uh, piecemeal together. It's not, it was never really paved right or aligned right. Um, so I'd like to forward those concerns. Uh, that's an area we're really trying to revamp and revise um, all the way from, uh, from the Brockton line up to um, Matfield Street. We had designated formally as an area of economic uh, target area or uh, development area and uh, we've taken a lot of steps to try to help all the businesses there and I, I just wasn't very impressed with the steps they took to help revamp that area um, so I'd just like to pass along that uh, the parking lot uh, condition and uh, the exterior of the building and signage um, should be addressed for aesthetics I think uh, you got Hardy's restaurant on one side that puts a lot of time and effort into his building and uh, we just had a eyesore taken care of across the street mm -hmm. thanks to um, Ramco survey stakes so um, if we can forward those concerns. Yep, I agree with you. Anthony's Ballroom, right Eldon? Yeah, that's it. That's what it used to be called way before your time. Don't remember that. No. All right, anything else? Okay, so we'll uh, make a motion. We pass that along as our concerns. So moved. Second. Any further questions? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I don't think we have anything else to come before the board. Oh, yes, we do. Yep. Um, I'm sorry. We grouped <coughs> two site plan reviews there. So right oh, I'm sorry. Yep, one, yep, I'm sorry. Uh, is 359 Pleasant Street. That is, as you travel down Pleasant Street, say, coming from Lowe's, you will find it on its left, on the left-hand side is the current Atlas buildings where all the Atlas storage buildings are. So what the new owner is looking to do is to demolish most of those buildings because they're in pretty poor shape and reconfigure the lot with new construction buildings and, um, and have to reshape its paving, its parking lot, which is also going to trigger not only planning board, but also stormwater review as well. And this is just a, still going to be a storage? That is my understanding, yes. Any concerns? Again, oh, we always ask that... Uh, consideration for neighbors be taken into consideration and aesthetics in the area be uh, assisted with the renovations. Hearing none, we'll just, I'll maintain a motion, just pass that along. So moved. Second. Anthony All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I think that is it for items on the agenda. I do want to quick, uh, take a quick moment and wish everybody in town a very happy holidays, Merry Christmas. And Happy New Year. We won't be meeting uh, again until the new year. Uh, I do want to take a moment and thank my children for uh, another great year. Um, every time any of us are here at these meetings, we're away from our family and loved ones, and I thank my two kids for their understanding. And um, I look forward to 2018. It's going to be another great year in West Bridgewater. Uh, thank the staff and, of course, all the townspeople uh, for all their support and all the great things that have happened in West Bridgewater over 2017. That being said, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night and thanks for watching.